Hello everyone. On today's video, we're going to be taking a look at IFRATC communications inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. For our flight today, we're going to be taking the Diamond 62 off here from Lesquin all the way up to uh, London City Airport. This is going to be kind of a chaotic flight because uh, we have multiple different uh, things we have to do. We're going to have to be doing a departure procedure. We're going to have to be doing an arrival procedure. We're going to have to be doing an approach procedure. That's going to be taking us pretty much all over the sky, trying to uh, get ourselves over the channel and back down into England itself. Navigation log looks like this. It's basically chaos. You can and see how we're gonna to have to get all the way up to 8,000 feet and come back down but we'll be exploring some of the different things you can do with air traffic control along the way all right let's go ahead and uh, get this flight going first things first uh, we're gonna to want to get this thing all set and uh, look roll starting I'm gonna let the automatic start go ahead and handle some of this stuff here and just make my life a little bit quicker oh look at this leather interior oh man this is like just too much airplane for me you can see that our flight plan has already been preloaded again uh, we're not going to be concentrating too much on that aspect of our flying today we're just going to be interested in making sure the air traffic control pieces make sense so the first thing you want to do is uh, every time you start at any airport is you want to go ahead and call up ATIS to confirm whatever the weather is at that airport Charlie important okay All right, 26 is the important thing, and also information, Charlie. So now what you would do normally is we go ahead and request IFR clearance from whoever the clearance controller is at that airport. So in this case, go ahead and call it up. Again, we're treating this as IFR this time. For IFR to London City, ready to copy. All right, get your pencil out. All we're doing now is making sure of our frequency is all kind of preset. Five, four. Got it. Six, four, read back, correct. Contact ground on one, one, eight, decimal, five, five. Okay, so that's all we have to do as far as that goes. Since uh, this airport is so small, we can actually just call up the taxi IFR directly. Leo ground red, six, four, with Charlie ready to taxi IFR. Red, six, four, taxi to and hold short of runway, two, six, using taxiway, Victor, two, pocket, two, tango, two. Contact tower on one, one, eight, decimal, five, five, when ready. All right, uh, they've given us permission to taxi via Victor 2, Papa 2, Tango 2. So we're just going to go ahead and pile into our aircraft and uh, kind of cruise over in that general direction. Well, one thing I would like to do, though, is be able to see where the heck I am here. There we go. Oh, that looks sketchy. Looks like we can take a right there, but again, you got to listen to the permission. All right, so uh, one cool thing we can do here is we can actually request some gown services. If I wanted to, I could request pushback. Now, the only concern I have is if I request this guy to push me back, what he's actually going to do is he's going to run into my propeller, and that's a little weird. So um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to kind of spiral around and grid onto the taxiways we need to. As usual, once we've gotten permission, we're going to go ahead and kill the parking brake, push the wheel all the way over. All right, let's get going. There we go. Excuse me, sir, but um, you're going to run into my propeller anyway, so I'll do you the favor. I'm going to go ahead and snap on my pitot heat now that I'm going, and we're just going to go ahead and proceed on the taxi instructions that we were instructed just a few moments ago. All right. This is the handy thing about having this little inset mode is that you can zoom in way, way, way far and kind of get a good idea while leaving that kind of right map to sort of know where we're going. Okay, let's get this bucket going. So the tricky thing about IFR versus uh, VFR flying, as I've mentioned uh, many times in the past, is with IFR, you're basically under control of air traffic control the entire flight. Uh, some people find that to be a good thing, because basically you just got to follow their instructions and you're good to go. Some people find it a little irritating, because uh, now you're going to have to do anything they say, even if it's something potentially dangerous. Uh, anybody, of course, who's uh, flown with this air traffic control before has probably had a little bit of fun with instructions that make no sense. But, eh, we all get used to it. I'm going to flip that to nav, I'm going to put on my flight director mode, and let's set to go. Looking pretty good so far, give myself just a little bit more power. Director's turned on. Roll in pitch mode, we want to actually be on navigation mode. GPS hold, looks good. Check for traffic, looks pretty good so far. I'm liking the way this is going so far. I'm going to go ahead and snap myself over here to the left. And we're just going to go ahead and get rolling down this highway. Yeah, highway, you know, taxiway. 
Now, one of the neat things about instrument flight rules is another thing is, of course, all that information they need is basically to keep you out of the way of all the traffic. You're kind of getting into basically a very complicated electronic highway in the sky kind of a system. And what we want to do is we want to make sure we're you know, doing our part to make that system move smoothly. So another thing is we want to constantly be looking for ways to kind of, you know, is there a way that we can shorten something while at the same time is kind of following the rules? And having a really, really good flight plan way before we get into the air is what's going to save you a lot of frustration during this experience. Okay, since so we've gotten our IFR clearance and everything is looking pretty good to go. Again, I can go back to clearance. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be back on tower. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Nice day in France. Easy on the brakes. I'm going to go ahead and push ourselves over here. Now remember, this is an IFR flight, so uh, things are going to get a little different. IFR, by the way, just means instrument flight rules. It does not mean that it has to be bad weather. All right, that is an ILS warning. We're going to go ahead and stop right before we get there, and we're going to ask really nicely if they'll let us take off. Okay, in the real world, normally I'd go ahead and get on the radio now and be like, uh, we're here, can we go? But it seems like they're not recognizing us. Ah, there it is. All right. <laughs> Leal Tower Red, 6-4 ready to go runway 26 ISR to London City. 6-4 cleared for takeoff runway 26. Yeah, this thing just takes a pretty concerted effort to get this thing rolling. All right, let's get lined up. Red, six, four, please acknowledge. All right, we're going to go acknowledge the permission. Cleared for takeoff runway, two, six, red, six, four. All right, so here's how this is going to work. The airport is going to pass us on to Tracon, it's called. And that's basically going to be the folks in the middle that are going to be kind of monitoring us for the rest of the flight. So we're going to go ahead and get going. Yeah, once they give us permission, we can go. We'll flip on our landing light. We don't really need it. It's not exactly dark. And a slight little crosswind there, but nothing too, too unusual. Right, 70 knots. Go ahead and pull the nose up. Airborne. I'm going to hold off on the flaps until we get to about 95 knots. You really got to kind of be ginger with this aircraft. It's a little underpowered. There we are. I'm pull the nose up. We want to be getting about, say, 105 knots or so. There we go, right there. And try to not be turning across the airport until you've got a little bit of altitude underneath you. There it is. So now remember how we took the time to set that up. We're going to go ahead and call Paris Center. We're going to let them know what our current altitude is, as well as what altitude we're climbing to. We don't need to say with you or anything like that. Paris Center Red 64 is climbing through 1,000 feet for 8,000 feet. Red 64 Paris Center, continue as planned. Altimeter 200 decimal 902. All right, that's all we have to do. So now that we're in the system, they'll go ahead and give us any information. Whoop, 6655. Five. Go ahead and check that. That was my mistake. That's all we had to do, 6654. Six, yeah, we're good. Now we're all set. Okay, let's go ahead and get rolling. That was a newbie mistake. That's what you get for not following checklists. All right, that's looking pretty darn good right now. Pretty darn good indeed. All right, so basically all we have to do now is uh, continue climbing up to our 8,000 feet. And once we get up to that altitude, we basically just have to keep getting handed off air traffic controller to air traffic controller. So um, I'll go ahead and fast forward to that point, and uh, we'll take a look at some of the other fun things you can do with IFR. All right, now that we've reached our cruise altitude and the aircraft is uh, all set up and ready to go, we can take a look at some of the other neat IFR features we can use. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it up, and you're going to notice you can actually request directions to the next waypoint that we're traveling to. Now, with our current flight, uh, you can kind of see that we're using GPS right now, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. As a matter of fact, if I zoom way, 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 way out, you can see everything is actually fairly well established as far as all this goes. So if I needed to, I could go ahead and call them up, and they tell me exactly where I need to turn in order to get myself back into a good position. Now, another neat trick that you can use that works really well is we can actually change our cruising altitude. So, for example, if we wanted to go up to uh, 10,000 feet, we could ask an increase of 2,000 feet. 
So keep in mind, you can only get that new altitude assuming you'd be able to descend in time and assuming that that particular altitude is available at this time. In this case, they said, go right ahead and climb up to 10,000 feet. I'm like, sure thing. 10,000 feet works for me. It's going to get me a slightly better air for this particular flight. So now you can go ahead and select your normal climb method. In this case, I'm going to click on flick mode. Go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward. And the aircraft is just going to go ahead and cruise all the way up to its altitude. Now, what's cool about this is at any point, I can actually call them up and request a decrease or an increase as I'm climbing to my next altitude. So this is, again, a great way to try to get around some nasty clouds. Maybe there's some weather. Maybe you're trying to get to a place where the air is a little bit thinner and air traffic control positioned you too low to begin with. It's all absolutely excellent technique that you can use for this. I will go ahead and take a look at when things get a little interesting and we start our approach. All right, we've just been given permission to go ahead and approach our next waypoints. So we can go ahead and acknowledge it. They're asking us to go to the Jacko transition. Uh, they've asked us to go up to 8,000 feet again, which is a little unusual given that fact that we just were asked to go down a second ago. But hey, you got to work with what you got kind of a thing. Okay, uh, now we've been cleared to go ahead and begin our descent down into London City Airport. So at this particular point, now we're basically going to line ourselves back up with our little flight, and then we got a little off course, but that kind of thing happens all the time. So basically what's going to happen is air traffic control is now going to step us through each one of these waypoints directly until we're able to get ourselves all the way down onto the ground. We're going to go ahead and swing ourselves around one more time. Pretty good, looking pretty good. We seem to have ourselves a little kind of in a whack here, but sometimes that happens with the automatic pilot, as you're probably very familiar with. Go ahead and take manual control for a second here. There we go. Nice steep turn in an extremely expensive aircraft. You know how it goes. Go up to our 8,000 feet. And I'll go ahead and flip on the automatic pilot again. All right, much, much, much better. I make sure we're in altitude hold mode. Sweet. Okay. So now what's going to happen is air traffic control has given us permission to proceed to Jacko, which you can see is uh, right over here on the right. So what we could do is if we want to have a little bit of fun with this, is I can actually come in here. We can go into direct mode, and we can actually dial in that particular waypoint to kind of get everything uh, sort of restarted as far as the way our flight goes. Again, this kind of thing happens. It doesn't really happen in the real aircraft, because again, you can always just bypass or reactivate legs. But sometimes you got to kind of go through the full process here. So now again, we're on our approach. Whoop. J C K J K K, and we're gonna set this let us letter to the letter O. Enter, enter, and we are back in business. Nice. We're we'll gonna flip on the navigation mode, and we are lined up with our waypoint one more time. Yes, excellent. So now that that's all set, it's just a matter of descending in the order that the air traffic control is gonna go ahead and give us our orders for that. I'll flip my pitot heat back on. And got some nice thing. You can see the nice coast of London there. Or London, the coast of England, my bad. Not all of England is London. All right, we're fairly well lined up. Check the instruction. They've asked us to go up to 9,000 feet. Now, you're probably going, well, that seems a little bit strange. Well, the thing is, they could need you to get to higher altitudes in order to make some, make some clearance for some aircraft that are below you, for example. There's a lot of different reasons why they could ask you to do that individual step. So, they've asked for 9,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and take us up to 9,000 feet. Don't forget to acknowledge any instruction they give you. Climb and maintain 9,000 feet. Red 64. Nice. So we're going to have to fly a little of this by hand today, and that's okay, though. I'm going to go actually switch this to heading hold mode. And we're good to go again. All right, we're going to drag ourselves all the way up to 9,000 feet, and then basically what we're going to do is they're going to ask us to descend in a few minutes. I'll go ahead and fast forward until we get a little bit closer to approach so you can see what the end of that looks like. All right, we've just been cleared to land the aircraft. Uh, basically what's happened is they've walked us all the way through, asked us for like 20 different altitude changes, and now they've just given us permission to go ahead and land the aircraft. Now, London City Airport is a really, 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 really cool airport. There's a lot going on with it. You basically have to drop out of the sky in order to safely put the plane down on the ground. Go ahead and check to make sure my landing gear are in the correct position. Everything else is looking pretty good to go. The last thing air traffic control is going to do when you're in IFR is they're going to hand you off to the specific tower that you're at. You can see I checked 
Epictetus and everything like that. Mm -hmm. If you need to at any point, of course, is, uh, you could go ahead and declare a missed approach if you need to go back around with your flight. But in this particular case, I'm just going to kind of drop this thing right on in. Now, this is a really, 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 really neat airport because of the fact that you're basically going to drop out of the sky in order to get yourself down on the ground. All right, I'm getting a gear warning. Surprise me. Go ahead and slap them back up. All right, let's go ahead and put them back in the down position. Nope, we still have an unsafe warning. All right, this is going to be an extra exciting landing today. I can't wait to see exactly what's going to happen when we hit the ground. But this was a demonstration of the IFR capabilities of the air traffic control. This wasn't a demonstration of how badly I can damage the landing gear. We'll go ahead and see just how bad off we are here, though. Let's take a look. Eh, it's not too bad. They're at least down, but they're not locked. So uh, we could always be declaring an emergency in the real world. All right, kind of get ourselves all nice and lined up here. Again, why would you put an airport here? I think this is a little crazy in my mind, but hey, each their own kind of a thing. All right, make sure everything's set. So we put our landing gear down, but they are unsafe. We're just going to cross our fingers that everything comes okay when we put pressure on them. So again, this has just been a basic video showing you the different IFR features. So the big thing is just follow instructions pretty much all the way down to the ground and you'll be fairly successful as far as your flights with it go. Um, if you are going to be asking for strange requests such as, you know, I want a different altitude or something like that, just be really careful because the avionics as it is in this time, this is December of 2020, are not the greatest. And I actually ran into several problems during my flight here that uh, unfortunately for some cases, I wasn't actually able to overcome them, which is probably why things are being kind of weird now. Go ahead and kill the throttle here. Lift the nose up just a teeny tiny bit. We have no idea if those landing gears are going to hold weight. Hold the nose up just... Oh, man, we did it. Ooh, that could have been terrible. All right, hopefully this video was helpful as far as uh, showing you some of those capabilities. Again, at any point, if you wanted to, you could actually make up a flight plan using your Garmin devices, and you could actually call it in as a flight plan, even though you didn't dial in directly. After that, we're just going to go ahead and pull ourselves right off the runway. As usual, of course, uh, when you have ended a flight in the real world, you want to go ahead and close your flight plan. You don't want to just kind of leave that sucker open because that could give you all sorts of problems later on when they try to figure out where the heck you actually found yourself located. Other than that, hopefully this has been helpful as far as some of those options goes. Uh, make sure you select your flight as IFR. Or this won't work. And other than that, enjoy. Ready.